And if you'll take a look at 182, 183, you'll see the new territory. It's lesson three. Uh, we're going to make some predictions here. I'd like you to predict what you think this lesson three is going to be about. Any ideas? Jerry? About somebody who transportates to another territory? Possibly. What do you think, Janessa? A murderer who was back in the olden days? It could be. And that's what makes me think right away. If you take a look at 182, there's a picture right there that looks like something in the olden days. If you take a look at that blue heading at the top, in fact, put your finger right underneath it, the new territory. That's big, bold letters. That gives you information in a second. You're going to know what they're talking about. They're talking about the new territory, which we know is Florida. If you look at the red heading, the, the bold letters, put your finger right around that. Make a little circle. Newcomers arrive. That lets you know in a second, too, that someone's new coming to Florida. And if you take a look on 183, make a box around that graph that's up at the top in the right-hand corner. That's going to tell you when the newcomers came, how many of them came. This is telling you Florida's population growth right there. This is a great way to get a, a prediction by scanning the page quickly. Pictures, headings, graphs. That gives you what you need to know in a second. Taking a quick look at these pages, 182 and 183, what are some predictions you might have? What could you predict about this, Angelica? All right, there's a new territory. What else might you be able to predict by just taking a quick look? Martin Ray. Newcomers arrive from different places in the world, maybe? Maybe. We don't know where the newcomers are going to come from. Anything else you might predict? Janessa. Um, it might be from the past and it might be from the future. All right, some things in the past, some things in the future. Why do we predict before we read? How does this, how does this help us, Sarah? You have an idea? Um, because it says that that uh, good readers do. That is one of the things good readers do. How do I know if what I'm reading is what I thought I was reading? If I'm not checking myself, I have to kind of talk to myself when I'm reading. I'm reading along and I'm saying, that's what I thought. I know I'm on the right track, or this is something different than I thought was going to happen here. So it's, it's a good thing. Predict. You don't necessarily have to write it down, but when you glance at this and learn a little bit about this, you're trying to figure out, what am I reading? You have to come in with an idea. You have to think when you're reading. Let's take a look a little more specifically at the text itself. A couple people said new territory right away. If you'll take a look right there at the blue at the top and put your finger underneath the big, big, bold words, the new territory. Why do they make it big and bold like that? What's the point of that? Angelica? Uh, it's the title. It is the title. Um, and what does the title tell us? The title tells us about what it's what, what it going to be about. Diamond, what were you going to say? Okay. This is in the chapter called How Florida Becomes a State. So first, Florida was a new territory. When Spain gave the United States Florida, it wasn't a state. It was a territory. Now, I think it was, uh, I forget who it was, but someone else said newcomers arrive. That's in red. If you'll just put your finger around that in an oval shape, why is that in red, newcomers arrive? What's, why would the author do such a thing? Emmanuel. Because it's like it's trying to get more details about it. Okay, they're going to break it into first who were the people who came, and then you can look down here. This gives you another. A, this is a great way to learn. Pictures are probably one of your best helps when you're trying to figure out information. Just take a glance down there. This can tell you right away. Is this happening now? Is this happening in the future? Did this happen in the past? Just looking at the picture helps you with the setting. What's, what can you tell me about this picture, just from a quick look? Jerry? It's in the past. It's in the past. How do you know that this is not happening right now? Because pictures in the past, they weren't made of color like 
the modern one on the other page. Right. What do you think? In the past pictures, they made it black and white. That's all we had. When I was a little girl, that's all we had. Now, I was not around when Florida first started, but we won't even go there. And if the picture isn't enough, take a look at the blue, the little caption right here. Put your finger underneath the blue that tells about the picture. And even if you can't read, you can look at the picture, but if you can, and I know you can, what does it say there? Could you read it for us, please? Uh, Tamia. Early settlers in Florida cut logs from trees to make their homes. This photograph shows a home that was built in the 1880s near Ocala. Exactly. This is where they live. This is not just some shack. I know it doesn't look nice, but this is what I'm trying to tell you. When the people came, there was nothing here really but trees and animals. Everything that they had, they had to build, they had to grow, they had to catch. They were self-sufficient. Now, most of these people, these poor people, these poor farmers who came, they cleared a little space, they made the, the crops, they started planting. They were self-sufficient. They were growing the crops for themselves. But there was another group. If you turn to 183, and you can see this textbook, they've even highlighted it. Would you point underneath that yellow, those two words that we talked about earlier? What were the other group, and what were they growing? There's two questions I'm asking you. What's the other group, not just these poor farmers? Who else was coming to Florida? Angelica? They grew cotton. They grew cotton. All right, that's a, called a cash crop. That's not something you're going to keep. These people, these other group that came, they grew things that they could sell. Cotton was one of the things they could sell. Sugar cane was something they could sell. But who were these people? They were not poor farmers. Caitlin? Slaves? No, they used slaves. But these people were wealthy, and they didn't live on a little farm. They lived on something called, uh, do you remember what was fancy? We talked about it last week. Do you remember, Janessa? It was a plantation. It was a plantation. All right, let's talk for a minute about um, this chart up here in the corner. This is, a, again, a really great way to get information quickly. I see this in the newspaper. All the time they have little graphs like this. And in our textbook, they're talking about what? What's this graph about? What do you think? I haven't heard much. Maria, go ahead. Florida's population growth. Exactly. How did you know it's about Florida's population growth? Because it's like the right here. There's the title. What years are they talking about in this one? Jerry? 1830, It spells it right out for you. You've got the interval and the scale. Just like we talked about in math, that's what I'm starting to like about social studies. We have math going on here. We have reading and social studies all at the same time. So you can see people started coming to Florida. And this was one of our predictions. Newcomers were coming to Florida. What year had the biggest number of people coming to Florida? Kayla. It's the tallest part of that graph. 140,424 people came. It's a whole lot of people.